there's a whole set of quantities that we are going to look at that will cause the second type of motion. And you know, the second type of motion, it looks like it's rotating, right? So, um, so <laughs> we're gonna call that. Um, in fact, uh, we will call this rigid body rotation. There's a, um, well, uh, there's a reason for um, all those adjectives, but um, I'll get into that eventually, maybe not today. So, so that rigid body rotation is what we want to introduce today. That when you have an object like this, when you have an um, extended object like this ruler here, then for me to try to specify that it's going to stay at rest, it's at rest and stay at rest, it's not enough for me to say that uh, force, net force is equal to zero. I have to say something else is also equal to zero. Because when I try to support it here and let go, even though I'm going to provide as much force as possible from my finger, I can, there's no way I can keep this at rest. I have to somehow put this at the exact right position to you know, keep it at, you know, stay, make it stay at rest. Somehow if I'm applying force at the wrong position, there's nothing I can do to keep this at rest short of moving my hand over. Yeah. So this quantity that we are going to associate with rotation, um, we are going to call it torque. It, it, it's a new word. I mean, you might have heard the torque in other contexts before, but I want you to treat it like a new word. We are defining torque for the first time in this class. So do you guys remember how we define the force? I mean, you know, we eventually said uh, force is mass times acceleration. But what's the one property of force? How did you describe force on the, I guess, in the third week of this class? Hmm? So force is a vector. It has magnitude and direction. But there's many other vectors. What does the force do? Uh, Arjun. Changes the position of the body. Okay, so some kind of motion, right? I want you to be careful. So right now, is the position of this body changing? Yes, right? Is there a force until I call it here? I mean, if you ignore friction, no, right? So, okay, so it does have something to do with the motion. So you could almost say force causes motion, but I want to be careful with um, how I describe that motion. What does force cause? Acceleration. acceleration. Sum of forces equals the net acceleration. Yeah, there's no such thing as net acceleration. There's only one acceleration. I don't add up add acceleration. I do add up forces. So, um, but you know, that's how we describe the force. Um, so we started out this class with the study of motion, right? Uh, position, velocity, and acceleration. And we went, you know, we spent the whole class doing this. You know, force doesn't cause the velocity. Like, um, the, like force is not necessary to maintain velocity. But what force is necessary for is for changing velocity, which will be related to the acceleration. Right? So um, we are going to develop our language and intuition for rotation the same way. So when we talk about torque, I want you to have this in the back of your head that everything I'm describing with the torque, it's going to, the intuition for that is going to come from force. So that's why I'm you know, going over what we already talked about with the force. That force causes acceleration. So you, with the force, you could say, you know, force causes motion, where you clarify what kind of motion you mean. You mean, by motion, I mean acceleration. I don't mean uh, velocity, because that was the, you know, mistake that ancient Greek philosophers were making for thousands of years, until, you know, it's, uh, Galileo and Newton straightened them up. So with the torque, we are going to say something similar. So we'll say torque, well, I want to model after this. So we'll say torque 
causes rotation. And I want to be a little bit careful about what I mean by rotation. Um, oops, I have a demo in there. Let me bring it out. One second. I have to bring it out. Um. Sorry, I had this out here. I don't know why I um, put it away. <laughs> so um, this is a bicycle wheel. It's something that can rotate, which is why it's great for this demo. And so right now, as I'm holding this bicycle wheel, um, is it rotating? OK. Does it look like I'm trying to make it lo rotate? No, right? I'm just holding on to the axle. I'm doing the same thing I'm doing here right now. So when we say torque causes rotation, we don't mean that when something is rotating like this, that there must be torque on it. So how do we want to clarify what we mean by rotation here? What we mean by quote unquote rotation? What would you say, what is the kinematical quantity that you would say torque is causing? Asia? Changes in rotation. Um, so I think the word rotation, it has the same problem with the word motion. It's that they are ambiguous. When I say rotation, what do you mean? Are you, am I talking about how fast it's moving? Or So, um, so Asia suggested um, changes rotation. Uh, let me suggest a little edit here. So I'm trying to move away from the word, just using the word rotation by itself, because it's a bit of an ambiguous word. The same way motion is an ambiguous word. So I want to say it changes um, how fast something is rotating. So as in, when I'm holding this um, still like this, how fast is it rotating? Zero, zero. whatever it is, zero. Um, so, and I'm not trying to cause it to, I'm not trying to apply torque, it seems. So it's not changing from that zero. Now, if it's already rotating, I'm still not cut, trying to cause any torque on it. So it seems to rotate at whatever speed it's already rotating, right? So, so the intuition we associate with the torque is torque is what I apply um, when I'm trying to make it go from zero to something not zero. Or when I try to make it go from something not zero to zero in how fast it's rotating. Yeah, so we are going to introduce all the proper words for describing this, um, you know, give you the actual proper definition towards the end of today's class. But let me just say, um, this is what torque does. Torque, it causes rotation where I want to clarify what I mean by rotation, because once again, it's an ambiguous word. And I'm going to call what the torque causes as um, angular acceleration. And we'll define angular acceleration more carefully in a little bit. But I hope you um, notice some similarity with our intuition for force. Force is what causes acceleration. And you're familiar with how all of that is defined. And what torque causes. We are going to also call it some kind of acceleration. It's an angular acceleration. <laughs> so, um, so that's what torque causes. And um, I've, so by the way, I'm going in a slightly different order from your textbook and actually portable TA. And uh, this is my justification. Um, when you're trying to introduce rotational quantities, there are several things you have to introduce. You have to introduce torque. You have to introduce something called the rotational inertia. And you have to introduce, uh, wait. And you have to introduce all the angular quantities, angular acceleration, angular velocity, um, angular position. And um, especially when I was trying to deal with the rotational inertia, I found it more easy to 
try to define torque using situations where net torque is equal to zero. Because those situations are easier to identify. Those are the situations where I see something that's not rotating, and I can say, um, hey, maybe it's not rotating because of this and that. Or you know, I can take this situation and start messing with it, start changing some things, and then I see that, oh, now it rotates. And then I can try to figure out, okay, why is it now rotating? Yeah. Because you know, I, um, I want to tell you this. With the, everything we have covered through Tuesday, we actually have covered all the laws of physics you are going to see, all the fundamental laws of physics you are going to see in this class ever. So this whole rigid body rotation, I'm not actually telling you anything that you don't already know, technically. I'm introducing new tools for describing some of the uh, most unintuitive motion you are going to see this week and next week. So, um, so you know, all I'm introducing is um, just some add-on to something that you already have. So I want to, that's why I want to derive torque from the sense of intuition that you already have from the description of force and all the translational motion. And I found that it's easiest to do it when if I use the, if I use the static equilibrium as the situation to introduce some intuition about torque and um, use that. 